Welcome, Prowl Nation, to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk. We have a jam-packed show for you today. We're brought to you by the Detroit Lions on the Prowl and the Belly Up Sports Network. <laughs> but let me, before we get into all this stuff we're going to get into today, let me kick it to my main man, the man of steel himself, Kurt Steele. What up, though? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl, your home. Detroit Lions news and rumors, and we got a bunch of stuff to go over today. A jam packed show. Uh, hey, let's get this thing started right now. Let go, Detroit Lions talk, baby. We're gonna get up, and on the way up, we're gonna buy the kneecap off. Yes, sir. We in the deep. Welcome back to the show, people. And boy, do we got a lot of news today. We got a lot of roster moves. And Dan Campbell was noticeably upset after that Saturday practice that I went to, noticeably upset. And there was a lot of moves after that. Some of them not related, of course, but some of them I'm not so sure. Kurt, what do you got? So what do you got for the first set of roster moves that we made this week? Okay, the first thing that happened, which was kind of a big deal because this guy is looking to make a splash and get on this roster is Jalen Reeves Maven. You know, he re-signed his um, uh, a deal this offseason, but he's coming back active from the COVID-19 list. So he spent his whole time on the list. Um, so you look at that, may have not have been a close contact, may have been actual um, infection with the virus, but he's healthy and he's out there on the field. Then you have the Lions uh, signed wide receiver Darius Jennings, 5'11", 180 pounds, 29 years old, so he's – not too old, but he's not too young, so he's right there in the middle. Uh, a seasoned veteran, you know, journeyman guy. And then the Lions signed defensive back Nikhil Roby Coleman. Now, this mm. guy, he's been around the league for a while. Um, eight years in the league, you know, came in at 21, 29 years old, five foot eight, 180 pounds. But here's the key. He spent three years out in L.A. With RB Pleasant, so you know he knows the system, how he wants to run uh, the secondary back there. So big things with him out there. He played very well out there in L.A. You know, he's been around the league for a while. You know, it's kind of a journey with bounce from a couple teams, but he likes uh, working with RB Pleasant. And it's probably just a match. And you look at Corn Elder, can't get on the field right now, just being outplayed by Mike Ford and then having some injury issues as well. So uh, uh, Nicole, Nickel Roby Colvin is one of those guys that we brought in to kind of sure up some of that secondary moves. And we have one more uh, guy, Nick Williams went on the COVID-19 list and the Lions signed a uh, nose tackle. They signed Miles Brown. And this guy's a beast of a human being, <laughs> six foot two, 320 pounds. And he is a young fella. He's only 23 years of age. Uh, so you're looking to sure up that defensive line. You have some people that's banged up on the pain train, and we brought in some bodies to kind of uh, temper that. You know, we have the game coming up on Friday against the Bills, so yes. it looks like some of the Can't moves wait. are roster moves. So uh, to make sure we have some camp bodies for that game, what do you got, uh, Jim? Well, we got some with uh, with people that come in. People need to go out, so <laughs> we we cut Drake Jackson, which is a little surprising to me. But we signed that backup center before, which mm -hmm. we, we didn't have on uh, here. But we did sign that backup center Evan, guy, Evan Boheim, right? Evan Boheim, yeah, Boheim, yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was last week, and then uh, so we let Drake Jackson go. And I know that Shawnee J will be upset with this. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I have to talk to him about that here in the next couple of days. We have to. We're gonna have to. <laughs> yeah see how he uh, maybe we'll have him on the show at some point just to see the yeah. reaction from that yeah mm -hmm. but anyway so then there's uh they cut undrafted free agent tight end jake hausman now this was a little bit of a surprise because he mm -hmm. was up there in the depth chart but you know who they didn't cut Brock ah. right <laughs> mm -hmm. i keeps mentioning the guy's name but you know mm -hmm. what he's not cut yet i do think he's going to be practice squad i don't think he'll make yeah. the team but He's got a lot of upside to it. He really, yeah. really does. Uh, I, I think. Uh, oh, go ahead. I go think. Ahead. I think Elise, Elise uh, Mac has the. the yeah. He has that that third roster spot for the third tight end. Pretty he's much a big like, one. I've seen yeah. him in person. He's a big dude. And he's the leader in the clubhouse right now for tight end three. <laughs> I, I think so too. But mm -hmm. my man is still there. <laughs> yeah, he's still there. <laughs> we always have our camp darlings, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. 
Well, if yours was uh, D'Angelo um, Amos uh, safety, <laughs> your dreams are dashed because they just cut him. My yeah. question is, why are they cutting the safety position? I mean, <laughs> um, here's my thing, and I get what you're saying. Why cut a safety? But if the guy's not good, why keep him he's around? Just it's not he, good. <laughs> it's because he's a safety. You got to let him go. I mean, he's, if he's not. If he's not cutting the mustard per se, pun intended, uh, you gotta yes, cut him. Yes. <laughs> you gotta get gotta rid of him. So him. you gotta <laughs> cut him. So those are those are the roster moves, and I don't know whether that was because of Dan Campbell or not. We're gonna have to go quick hitting on this show uh, today. So my family discussion topic for today is: uh, What if any of these new roster signings are you excited about? you know and are you hurt by any of the cuts so far so we'll put that as a multiple thing in there and uh make sure that you answer that in the comments below all right so my news and rumor today is camp observations i went down saturday to see the scrimmage and i wanted to give you some of my feedback on that and uh don't want to take too much time but i'm okay. there's some players i'm worried about and there's some players i'm excited about let's go to the excitement first because i want to be excited man mm -hmm. this team i just want to see them in preseason because there's a lot of questions but first i'm mm -hmm. excited about tj hawkinson and who isn't that guy's going to be wide receiver number one let me tell you <laughs> because there's nobody else at this point uh, i'm on rest brown another guy i'm really really excited about and to be honest with you Penny Sewell showed up and showed out. I, I, I saw him play well. Taylor Decker played well. Jonah Jackson's playing really well. And guess who else? Big V. Big V was the, playing well. The offensive line, uh, looks, offensive looks, line looks great. Okay. DeAndre cool. Swift looks good. Jamar Jefferson looked good. We'll get to that later uh, mm -hmm. as uh, we have some injury notes and, and stuff. The pain train is coming up. Mm -hmm. But Here's the, here's the, I'm not going to say negative because I don't know. I want to see this in preseason. Jared Goff. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh, Jared Goff was on fire. He was five for five. He moved the team down the field. He was throwing five to seven yard passes. I mean, he holds the ball really long for me. His arm angle's weird. I, I don't know. I, I just want to make sure that in the, because because he could have all day, I think, mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But he hold he holds the ball really long. He does not look off his receiver. Uh, I think a couple of them should have been picked, to be mm -hmm. quite honest. And if it was again against some other team and game situation, maybe he doesn't throw it the same way. Maybe there's a difference. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm concerned. I, I'm concerned mm -hmm. about Jared Goff. Everybody else says he, oh, he's just he's doing amazing. And and I mean, to me, it was just very short passes, mostly to Hawkinson. And I don't know. Uh, to me, that's not, I don't know. If it's game manager, great. And if he has great running backs, great. The offensive line is playing good. Uh, you know what? The offense could work that way. But I'm just concerned right. about Jared Goff. Um, other concerns, um, <sighs> that defense doesn't look good at all. <laughs> I'll be honest, it just doesn't look good right now. Um, you know, I, I just hope it, it tightens up in uh, in the uh, preseason. But, of course, you can't tackle. You know, you're basically just touching the guy down. So how would we know if, they, if we couldn't yeah, stop? Yeah, you can't really we tell. You can't really tell, of, you know, the, right. I guess, the aggression level and the tackling ability because guy, they're only. One guy that impressed me is uh, Alizé Mack. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he uh, no, that's how they pronounce his name. Alizé, uh, like the liquor? Alizé, like the liquor. Absolutely. Okay. Alizé <laughs> Mack, a big mm -hmm. kid. Um, I think he, I think he makes the team as the third, like you said, third tight end. Really mm -hmm. good guy. Really good. Sage Chirac kind of showed up a little bit in that practice as well. Mm -hmm. um, running backs look good. There was this little child that we had uh, maybe found <laughs> missing child, whatever. Khalif Raymond, uh, uh -huh. number 11. That dude has speed to burn and he's quick. He, he's sudden, yeah. man. He's twitchy. He's really, really good. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be the kick returner, but he now has competition. Right. We just signed uh, that Darius. I uh, can't remember his last name. Darius Jennings. Jennings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Darius Jennings. We just signed him and he's a kick return specialist as well. So who knows maybe, if maybe, we it's, had, it's maybe just, his parents came to claim him. I'm not really sure. I'm but, not uh, messing with you with that <laughs> one. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we, let's let's see how big Khalif Raymond actually is. 
And this other uh, guy we just signed was 5'8". So. Yeah, they're about the same size because Khalid yeah. Raymond is 5'8", uh, 182 pounds. So they, they're both yeah, running around the same size. He was he was he was standing next to some of those other guys, and I was like, "Holy cow!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whose kid is yeah. that? Why is he on the field? No, he he looks really he looked really good that day. But I want to mm-hmm. see these new guys too. Um, but mm-hmm. you know what? We had a Hall of Famer go in, or we had a guy going to the Hall of Fame this weekend, mm-hmm. Calvin Johnson, and uh, he gave a speech that sparked a little controversy. And Kurt is going to tell us his insight into Calvin Johnson's okay. Hall of Fame speech. All right, so Calvin Johnson. Uh, Definitely had a, a a different type of uh, Hall of Fame speech. You know, he advocated for, you know, uh, pain alternatives. You know, he has his uh, primitive, which is uh, a cannabis, you know, plant-based, you know, uh, treatment for uh, pain relief. And I looked at his speech and I'm looking at Calvin Johnson and he said one thing. He said that people who suffered in silence and pain, um, I notice you, I see you. And he said that, um, one of the things with that is that he suffered an injury, his rookie season where he, a back injury, he couldn't even feel his legs. And he said he took whatever and did whatever to make sure he got on the field inspired by the Lions, uh, fan base, because he said that they showed up when they were on 16, but they kept coming and he was inspired to, to keep getting out there. So. If I'm looking between the lines, if you're reading between the lines and he was talking about the opiates and how, you know, those things can mess with your uh, mental and uh, physical abilities because of the fact that, you know, opioids are very addictive. And uh, speaking from personal experience, having some injuries and having been um, prescribed opioids, uh, oxycotton, oxycodone, uh, that stuff can throw you for a loop and can definitely can get you uh in a utopia type of experience where it, it can become very addictive. We've had a, a opioid crisis inside the military because that's one of the things that they prescribe the most is opioids. And I had a friend of mine uh, who is deceased now, uh, not because of the opioids, but um, he got addicted to opioids uh, when we were uh, downrange, you know, down in, the, in Afghanistan because of the fact that he was injured and hurt uh, downrange and they kept the subscribing to opioids just to get him through the day. And the same thing goes on the NFL. You know, you giving these guys, you know, these pain meds to get them through. But opioids are very addictive. And I think that Calvin Johnson may have had an issue with opioids and especially messing with his mental faculties. This guy did everything he could to play. We know at the end of his career, he was just really going through the walkthroughs on Friday so he can play in the game on Sunday because he had to have one day of practice a week just to get on the field mm-hmm. where he was, his body was deteriorating. His body was hurting. That's one thing he said, that's why he retired because of the fact that, you know, his body was telling him it was shutting down and still the league back then, a few years ago, they weren't even considering uh, having a, a cannabis based uh, or a plant-based treatment program where they could heal people without the opioids. So, I think Calvin Johnson was speaking for personal experience when he said that people were suffering in silence and hurting because you never heard him complain about it, but you say he took things to get himself on the field and did treatment and just, just to play in the game for at least the last two years of his contract. Uh, he was um, just practicing the minimum to get on the field on Sunday. So I say all that to say this, if you do all of that, all of those things that I just said he did to get himself on the field and the team takes money from you and you risking your life and limb for them and the city and the team. And they repay you by doing that. You can't tell me Calvin Johnson quit on this team because he did everything in his power to play, you know what I'm saying? Taking uh, uh, prescription drugs that were, are truly, really, truly bad for you. And, and getting out there on the field and making sure that he could play in the uh, uh, get himself out there and only missing games when it's absolutely necessary, but suffering through all of that, suffering through the mental anxiety of, of being hurt and getting out there on the field anyway, just because he wants to go out there and play for the fans in the city of Detroit and to see just to have the, the organization do that to him. I think that is the reason why he is very bitter. And he was very upset about that offer that they made him. We talked about that 
uh, a couple of days ago. I think that that's why he's bitter because you look at that. If someone does all of that for you to break their neck, to do that and play the game uh, for your team, for your city, for the fans, and you repay him by taking money back from him, I think that that's why Calvin Johnson is so bitter. And even Barry Sanders said it. He said, give it time. He said, even with him, it took time. So he said, give it some time. It's going to be okay, but you have to let this thing play itself out. And I think that trying to rush Calvin Johnson back into the fold is something that's going that's going to be adverse. That's why it seems to be so much pushback from Calvin Johnson. Those are my thoughts. Uh, I think he gave a great speech. Thank you. They thank the cities of Detroit. He thanked the fans. And he said Michigan is home and Detroit is his city. And his the pride are the Lions fans. So he loves the Lions fans. So all those out there guys out there bashing Calvin Johnson, think about that. That guy says he loves you. Even though you hate him, he loves you. Yes, he does. He loves the fans. He said it in the speech. He's just not enamored with the uh, with the organization. And, and the things that you were saying really hit home. Um, I had some uh, difficulties at some point in my life too. Never was addicted to opiates, but I had to take them for a while for pain. Mm -hmm. And I do understand that, that uh, he wants to get out there and help people. I think that's mm -hmm. what he's really trying to do. He wants to get people off the opiates, mm -hmm. onto an alternative pain uh, regimen. And I mm -hmm. think that that's a good thing and not and a bad thing. I think that's a personal thing with him where it's like he knows the uh, the effects of being on opioids and he wants to help people avoid that you it's know his and personal give them, mission yeah a healthier yeah. Uh, and and he's not the he's not the first or or the only hall of person in the hall of famer to uh have a platform doing a hall of fame speech it's his speech he can say whatever the hell he wants to he had all of those uh accomplishments and he can say whatever he wants to say doing his hall of fame speech you look at them he was the most dominant player at, at the wide receiver position while he was in the league. I remember I mean, the, the time I mean, where he went up against three Bengals and just jumped yeah, over all jumped three over guys. And did the same thing in the, the with, against the Cowboys. I mean, yep. it's just ridiculous. Yep. The amount of uh, talent that a young guy had. And he made a Hall of Fame career. And I'll say this over and over again. Playing for a losing franchise. Yep. Yep. The uh, most I, dominant I, player in his position playing for a losing franchise. Yeah, it's just, for me, he's incredible. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not going to talk bad about any of mm -hmm. our Hall of Fame people or former players like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of people like to bash on, you know, some of them. But this guy, I mean, he, Hall of Fame without a playoff win. Yep. I'm not talking Super Bowl. This guy, they never won a playoff game. They didn't want a playoff first game. ballot Hall of Famer? That says oh, no. a lot about him. That says a lot about Calvin Johnson mm -hmm. and how – and what he meant to the game itself, not just the Detroit Lions fan base and the, the organization, what he meant to the game of the football, you know Absolutely. what I'm saying? What he meant to the game. I mean, it was a, you can't be one of the faces of the, it's, that's rare that you're one of the faces of the league on a losing roster. It really on is. On a losing team. Yeah. You know, we, we here at uh, Detroit Lions on the Prowl, we strive to give you the best information we possibly can. So we're going to mm -hmm. do an injury report. The pain train the pain. is back. <laughs> <laughs> and okay uh, so we are going to give you that report i'm going to let kurt read those names and what that kind of means for uh this friday okay so we know we have the uh preseason game coming up here in a couple of days against the buffalo bills and jamar jefferson is questionable with a leg injury quintess cephas has a head injury which is you know which is quote unquote yeah, a concussion, maybe. Uh, he's mm -hmm. questionable as well. Uh, defensive tackle Nick Williams is out on the COVID-19 list. An uh, undisclosed injury for cornerback Corn Elder. Uh, DeAndre Swift is questionable with a groin injury. Uh, Levi Anzarike, the defensive tackle, defensive end, undisclosed injury. He's questionable as well. John Pendicini, the defensive tackle, he has an undisclosed injury. He is questionable also. Uh, Tyrell Crosby, who was an offensive tackle slash offensive guard, he has a hamstring issue and he's questionable. And Quentin Dunbar, who's been away from the team for quite a while, uh, dealing with some personal issues, he is questionable as well. I doubt that we see him. He has been in contact with the team per uh, Dan Campbell, but he's dealing with something that's a very big issue who's, that has kept him away from the team for quite a while. Yeah, I agree. A lot of these injuries, Jamar Jefferson just injured his leg. We don't know mm -hmm. what the severity of that injury is. He tried to go mm -hmm. in practice again, and he just couldn't. 
so they uh, so we I'm pretty sure he's out for Saturday for Friday, but I, I they mm-hmm. list him as questionable. I think I'm pretty sure he's out. Um, and, and there may be more injuries as uh, as we go forward, but we're yeah. going to start that segment of the show now and, and before. And on Thursday, we're going to go over the Buffalo Bills uh, and and give you the people to watch. And that mm-hmm. Dan Campbell announced that the starters will go for one quarter. I'm telling you, this there's I love this transparency. Yeah, I mm-hmm. love it. You know, yeah. I mean, what coach goes out and says, "Yep, we're going to play these guys for this long," and blah blah blah. You never know. There, there's you know? only a couple. There's only a couple of who, who've done it. I think it's been three uh, right now. You had Sean McVay saying that Matthew Stafford will never play in the preseason as long as he's the coach out in L.A. And wow. then you had um, uh, the coach for uh, Ron Rivera, the coach for the Washington Football Team, saying that his starters will play about a series uh, right now. But those are the only three guys that have really said anything publicly about their uh, their starters playing in the preseason. I just need to say I love Dan Campbell. So I just yeah, need to say like that Dan before Campbell. We, before we move and, on. And to be honest with you, as much as he was clowned earlier, but now he's becoming a media darling. The, yes. the media, national media is starting to take notice of Dan Campbell and like what he's doing. So uh, shout out to Dan Campbell. MCDC, baby. Or MCDC, like we call him, DC, Dan, Dan Campbell. Campbell. How we call him here on. <laughs> All right. You might have had so. enough of what we've had to say. So we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go to what you have to say. That's our comment cards. Uh, Jimbo G says, good interview. I hope to see him again soon. Yes, you can. I think we will have him for the Rams game for sure. Aubrey Pleasant will create a big impact with the Lions, but Brad uh, impact being felt by the Lions, by him uh, next to Dorsey and other high up football leaders. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Having trouble reading today because the the screen is a little dark. I'm gonna brighten okay. that up for you guys and make right. change a little <laughs> bit, but I couldn't read it. So yeah, okay, here we go. Jerry Jerry Benson says, lately I've been watching a lot of highlight films of Matthew Stafford that Rams fans have been posting. Wow, the guy is incredible. Can you imagine what he would do if the Lions had Stafford on the field playing for <laughs> them? Wow. Now I will say this. That's funny. Uh, there is a report, and he and he said this. He did. He said that he did go back to the Lions uh, after he asked to be traded. He said that he would stay uh, if they if they wanted him, and they just you know they they made the trade anyway. So I wow. mean, we'll see. Uh, I, th- I think that that was one of the things that it was kind of a win win uh, for both both teams. You know, what I'm saying where we get the draft so capital. Too. And he gets to have a fresh start out in LA. I think that works. That works for me. <laughs> okay. KC boy, a Bay boy says love Calvin and the lions. And I could care less uh, Ben over it. It's personal with Calvin and nothing will change. Uh, that surprise, not even money. It will take time and time only. And you know, part of that, I really agree with. But I think paying the money back to him and one lump sum would really help the situation. But I think it's it's, it's an injury. I mean, it's going to take time to heal. I really, I yeah. really think that. I, I think, I think that it's definitely going to be um, one of those things where it's going to take time, and and that was going to be one of those things. And you, like you said, maybe with the uh, the money. But Mike Anderson says, can someone please explain this to me? They said that golf needs everything to be perfect and Stafford doesn't. That's my man, Joe, Joe B, Joe Branham, the sheriff, Joe Bags, who is definitely a Rams fan. So he knows about Jared Goff. Then they say the reason that Stafford didn't do better was because the team around him. Well, we, that was what we said that uh, the team around him. Yeah. Okay. The team around him sucked. We know that. Okay. Either you need help or you don't. Well, if one has everything and the other one doesn't have anything that is help. Am I saying that right, mm-hmm. yeah. Jim? Yeah. If the one guy had help and he had everything help, he had everything that was pretty much good and he succeeded in that type of system because Jerry Goff, wherever you have to say about him, he succeeded out in LA. He did. Got a, got a team to the Super Bowl, multiple playoff wins, multiple Pro Bowls. He succeeded. Sure, but you keep comparing Goff to Stafford and that's apples and, and oranges. It's, it's, They're it's just definitely two answer. different quarterbacks Play, for yeah. sure. Okay, the fact that Stafford didn't win more shows he needs a team around him and the comment about how Stafford doesn't need things to be perfect is false statement. Does that make sense? I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I think it does I, make I, sense. I, I understand what you're saying. I don't think he needs things to be 
perfect, but I think he needed more help. Having more help and having things perfect are two different things. Yeah, he could have he could have done with a better O line play. Yeah, think, if he and, if he uh, had a with a better O line, maybe. yeah. That, it, I don't think stuff. he needed to be perfect, but I think he needed to be it needed to be better. Where Goff needed everything to be uh, checks and balances out there in L.A. and he needed to have uh, things around him to help him succeed. That's two different things. Being perfect and be, having help is two different things. They're they're, they're two different quarterbacks, though. Uh, yes, I, I, I look are. at Jared Goff as more of a game manager, and I mm-hmm. look at Stafford. Stafford could take his, the team on his back, and and when they're down, make a comeback. I just mm-hmm. I just don't see that we're going to put that on Jared Goff. It's going to be more of a team effort with him because that's the, the kind of quarter. He's a West Coast quarterback. He's a, and I think he succeeds in that element and he does need that to succeed. I think Stafford can succeed in multiple elements. The problem was he just didn't have enough on defense, offense and things. I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'm just trying to, trying to say what I think about that. Sorry. Yeah, I got you. Mm-hmm. Luke G. Who's he? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Luke G. Shout out to Luke, man. What's up? Luke G's field review. Business mm-hmm. is business. I respect business as a business guy myself. Contracts are legal mm-hmm. documents and they could have taken more, but he's still tripping in my opinion. He's talking about Calvin Johnson. Mm-hmm. He's At talking these- about a contract as a contract as a contract. And when you walk yeah. out on that contract, see, see, there is two different sides to this and, and I understand both. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A contract mm-hmm. is a contract is a contract, but mm-hmm. the spirit of the law, the spirit mm-hmm. of the contract may be something different. Mm-hmm. And so what we're talking about when we talk about maybe they should have paid him back that money. It's how, how valuable he was to the city of Detroit. And did he get paid enough for that? Yeah, I think he did, but also um, it, it's, it's a PR thing. And it's also a, a thing where you don't burn bridges with your players. And I think that's kind of where I'm at on it. I think the Lions have been childish, and I think he's been childish. I think they've both had a hand in this. Yeah, you know, it's 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 going to work itself out eventually. I hope um, so. Um, and you can outperform a contract; it happens all the time. Oh, absolutely, uh, totally right. agree. Mister Darkman Twenty Five says, uh, "I'm a Rams fan, and I hate that golf. I hate for golf is weak. Literally, every quarterback needs things for it to be perfect." How Mahomes looked when it wasn't perfect for him. This is very. Mm. I don't know if that was. That's a perfect. good point, though. Yeah, I man. Everyone needs that. Everyone needs that help, and it definitely was an issue in the Super Bowl uh, when he did not have the help that he needed uh, from the offensive line. It showed because that defensive line from the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers was wreaking havoc in the backfield. Back it is a good him. point. I mean, the, but mm-hmm. the thing is also, it's like there are a certain level of talent for quarterbacks mm-hmm. okay you have your elite quarterbacks if you don't have any wide receivers you have nobody to throw to you can't be an elite mm-hmm. quarterback without your wide receivers do they have to be excellent and aaron Rodgers thing he's got Devontae adams and mm-hmm. a bunch of other guys <laughs> pretty much yeah. i mean he does make mm-hmm. his people better i guess the question mm-hmm. is how much better does the quarterback make the rest of the team with stafford right. the argument was he didn't you know, mm-hmm. he didn't elevate the play of some of these guys. He needed mm-hmm. Calvin Johnson. He needed some of these bigger name wide receivers, you know, mm-hmm. whereas, uh, and golf, I think doesn't, doesn't need that because it's not the same offense. It's so different from what we're mm-hmm. doing, but let right. me stop rambling on and go mm-hmm. to my favorite part of the show, the dessert of my man, Kurt. All right. So today we're going to talk about a guy who has to took time to revitalize himself this off season, work with Michael Brockers and, put on some extra weight when he was challenged by the coaching staff. And that's one Deshaun Han. Deshaun Han is up to over 290 pounds from 270 last season. He said he credits uh, the lobster bisque uh, with macaroni, lobster macaroni and cheese <laughs> with, said with some stuff uh, from his shelf in the off season to get him up to 290 pounds. But he's looking to make a big difference. That's the, if you look at that, I like the way he's going about it though. Putting all the extra muscle and weight to make himself better and actually maybe strengthen his body to avoid injury. So I like what he's doing. He's trying to work himself back in. I think that he has definitely has a chance to probably stay in Detroit. Unlike uh, I believe Austin Bryant may be gone. So a uh, big shout out to um, my man, Deshaun hand and that's dessert with your man, Kurt brought to you by delightful bites. Hey, they have custom cookies for every occasion. If you like how they look, you'll love how they taste. Delightful Bites, 
get your cookie on. Yeah, another thing about Deshaun Hand, man, that was muscle. That's 20 pounds of muscle. muscle You've seen him yeah. flexing, you know, and stuff. And he looks happy. He looks, he looks so much uh, like he's going to please that I'm going to play and I'm, and I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm a player. He said, you can put me a safety and I'd still be a player. <laughs> I'd lose, but I'd be a player. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. But in my definitely. final thoughts for today, this was a fun show to do. There was so much information. Hopefully we got all that information out to you guys in a good way. Uh, but we got some, we got some things coming up. Uh, we, we have the uh, preseason game this week, preseason game. Number one, we will mm -hmm. profile the Buffalo bills on Thursday morning for you. Mm -hmm. That'll be at 11 o'clock AM. We also have the gold members meeting at 3 mm -hmm. PM on Wednesday. I will be mm -hmm. there. I will be there. I think we'll see how that all goes anyway. And then we have free for all Friday. And then when we start the season or maybe a little bit, we're going to start playing a daily fantasy football game with you guys. We got more information coming up on that. As we figure out how it's all going to work, you could get to play against me or you get to get, play against the man of steel, Kurt Steele, and see if you could win prizes and all this other stuff. We're going to have stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, we'll let you know more about that as it comes up. I uh, just want to say thank you to Kurt, man. He's been doing a lot lately for us and doing his TikTok thing and getting his TikTok on it. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing a yeah. really good job with that stuff. And just appreciate you, man. I really do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, my final thoughts for today's show is that you never know what someone's going through. So, you know, always take a, a, a bit of pause before you judge someone because you never know what's going on behind the scenes, especially if you don't know what them personally. It's kind of hard to know what's going on uh, and, and judge someone when you don't know. So, uh, and that being said, if you are suffering, suffering pain, suffering mental illness, please get help. It, 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 you know, that's a show of strength, not a weakness. Uh, if you get, decide to get help, if you're struggling uh, with anything, be it addiction or, 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 you know, mental things, please get help. And, and that's one thing we definitely want to share right here with mm -hmm. the current lines on the prowl. And uh, I am so excited uh, for fantasy football. Uh, what Jim said, we're going to have a, 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 a daily fantasy thing. We're going to have, you know, play against your boy, Kurt Steele, who is, uh, I'm pretty decent. I win me a couple of leagues each year. So I uh, suck. Or, or, or you're going to play <laughs> against the novice over there, Jim Bordeaux. But if you want to set your game up, Come holler at your boy Kurt. You play against me. We'll see what you got. Uh, see what and you got. definitely, definitely uh, looking forward to Friday. Football is back, baby. Yes, right here, right here. I have Detroit one more thing, and I, I, I forgot. My you friend from uh, from grade school, Gary mm -hmm. Schichtel, died uh, of cancer the other day, so I have to attend that. Uh, yeah, thing today. So shout yeah. out to his family and uh, friends and yeah. his girlfriend and all that. Um, yeah, and sorry, uh, about, I'm just uh, sorry. Uh, Speaking of that, yeah, I, I lost a, a high school classmate uh, last week, Ruben Guerra. Uh, shout out to my man, Jimmy Guerra. Uh, he listens to the show. They were cousins. They both graduated uh, with me, class of 90, out there at Powers Catholic in Flint. Uh, we lost uh, Ruben to a battle of cancer uh, last week. So shout out to, to the Guerra family. Um, you know, your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we are hearing all, all of our thoughts and prayers right here for Detroit right. Lions on the prowl. And um, let's walk over to the Wall of Fame to see who we have on their bronze members. We have Detroit Drew, Midwest Lion, uh, Brian Stover, Bo Gagrias, Justin Tinkate, the new guy. Nah, he's old. Say Surratt Roberts, who <laughs> really changed his name because I kept calling him that. Hey, shout out to Say Surratt uh, Roberts, uh, Crystal Wiley, Bubba Bo, John Kapler, Art Allen, Jimbo G, David Anderson, and the Latino Lion. Silver so members, we have Nomis J, Jason Portis, Cap Ice Cole, Batman of the 313, John Martin, and look out, the F5 tornado is blowing through the silver members. All right, for our gold members, we have Michael Huck, who's always in the gold members and has some great takes. Just in the D, D, <laughs> excuse me, Larry McQuiston, I got to come back to that one. Uh, Turner C. Burley, uh, Dominic oh, Davis. I did it again. <laughs> uh, Bob Korowski, uh, he, you know, at his whole, his whole full name. <laughs> Garos, we got All got right. Pr Pride 74, Matthew Ferguson, who's always in the gold members meeting yeah, as well. So Matthew's great, great cool takes. Yeah. Randall Flag 606, Miles yep. Gibbs, Randy Prince, wow. the gridiron blitz. North and Ken drops by and drops some knowledge and some gems on us every now and then. That's and right. you know who it is. Right. The doctor. <laughs> Dr. Detroit. Detroit X. 
<laughs> oh, always in. Yeah. To become <laughs> Sorry, a member man. of the Wall of Fame, click the Join Now button in the description or the Detroit Lions on the Prowl logo at the bottom of the screen. There is no hey. malice intended in that. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I, and I even changed the thing and forgot to do that. Sometimes I'm so rushed, I just don't see it. All right. Hey, you know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl. You're home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. And go over and check us out on DetroitLionsOnTheProwl.com. Or you can go over to LionsOnTheProwlShop.com and get your Lions on the Prowl gear. My man Jim is sporting the Lions on the Prowl family t-shirt i got on the kneecap biter shirt so go over there and check it out and you can get yourself a what up though shirt from your man kurt steel as well and so much more gear so cups mugs jackets everything you want over there with the, for the alliance on the prowl family and join prowl nation and get your gear over there and check out the show over there on bellyupsports.com hey fantasy is around the corner and get your fantasy knowledge from over there at uh, bellyofsports.com. They have a great fantasy department over there and help uh, try to help yourself beat Kirsty. I don't think it's going to help though. But wow. uh, when we start playing our fantasy football game and get yourself some Lions gear, you know your boy Kurt is sporting the official 2021 sideline gear cap. And you can go over to fanatics.com. Cool. The link is in the description below. A portion of the proceeds from that link helped us grow the content on this channel. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. You know, I had to you know, saying use that link, you know, saying and, and help us grow this content myself. But for sure, hey, it is, <laughs> it is Tuesday, and hey, I got one more day, one more day until I see my youngest granddaughter and my daughter are coming to visit tomorrow. So I am so excited and happy about that. Uh, that's why I will not be in the gold members meeting on Wednesday. But you know, shout out to all you got the gold members uh, that come through. And, and being that, but you know, family's first baby, and I got to, take, got to see that family baby. But um, hey, it's Tuesday, Friday is football. Wow, mm. Lions football on Friday, baby! So get excited, you know what I'm saying? Get yourself some snacks. Go to the store. You got a few days. Get you some popcorn. Get you some Kool Aid. Uh, you know the blue kind, so you can go ahead and sup it up during the game. Uh, you know, and you know, dump a little bit of you know what you need to do, happy juice in there, so you can uh, have the hopium for the rest of the season. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I had a fun time. Great show today. Much information, and we will be back tomorrow with another great show for you guys right here on Detroit Lions of the Prowl. And you know what you guys to do. Clean off your desk, wipe the crumbs off your mouth, and get back to work. And whatever you do in life, you know what you guys to do. You guys to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. For my man, Jim, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real, real soon. soon.